Lib Dems start from a presumption of open courts and transparency and lack of secrecy. But it is clear that there are some cases which are so um, sensitive and do genuinely risk national security. And that's where you rely on a robust and independent judiciary to actually make that call. Um, the Conservatives have many stupid ideas, but I think none beats the sheer stupidity of this idea. And the idea that in St Albans, housing associations should be forced to sell some of the very few units of social housing that we have. And then what they've said to fund this, because the idea that these will be sold at a discount of up to £100,000 per unit, but because housing associations are independent private bodies, they can't be confiscated. It has to be bought at the market price. So the differential is going to be, have to be met by local councils funding it. One idea is to look at the council's own land bank and look at, for example, where there are all these empty garages or vandalized garages and say, what can be done there? We need to look perhaps at the density of some of our post-war um, housing estates. I mean, the lowest density housing in St Albans is the New Greens estate. The highest density housing in St Albans is the conservation area around the Abbey, which was perhaps the most expensive housing in St Albans. So density isn't necessarily bad if it's designed well, but then we have to think about the schools and the other infrastructure as well. Well, there's an automatic presumption against developing the Green Belt. Um, if you look at Hertfordshire, and Hertfordshire does need more homes. Now, the Lib Dems, in our current manifesto, have talked about building 10 new garden cities, including five on a new railway line between Cambridge and Oxford. But I think that idea of a garden city in the north of Hertfordshire has a lot of resonance. So I think that that needs to be looked at. Why is there a European Declaration on Human Rights, Convention on Human Rights? It comes from what Hitler did and Stalin did, and a determination, particularly by Winston Churchill and British judges, it was written by British lawyers, a determination by them that this should never be allowed to happen again. And we have to hang on to that. And the idea, some people, some parties, talk about a British Bill of Rights. It's a pretty dodgy concept. I wonder what, in, in, in Putin's Russia, a Russian Bill of Rights would look like, and who'd be protected and who wasn't. I used to work for Transport for London, so I am familiar with the challenges of public transport, and that sometimes things go wrong, things which are out of your control. And so the first thing I would say is I think that the franchisees, and in our case Govia Tensling, have an absolute duty to up their game on communication when things go wrong so that people know what's happening and actually are given clear instructions about what alternatives there might be. And secondly, I think there has to be much, much clearer compensation The Lib Dems have proposed, and I think we're unique in the, um, amongst the national parties, the other parties have promised to protect the education budget. We majored in our manifesto announcement this week on increasing the overall education budget by two and a half billion pounds. And this was specifically to address the issue of lack of school places. Quite simply, in the end, the decision was taken by the Conservative Secretary of State, Eric Pickles. The issue is that this government came in on a mantra of localism, and Eric Pickles came in on a mantra of localism, and St Albans and, and, Har and um, Artsmere don't want it. And just up the railway line, Luton and central Bedfordshire want a freight terminal in Sunderland. So it is utterly barking.